Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth, a vast expanse of ice and relentless wind. Yet deep beneath the ice lies an astonishing secret. This frozen continent was once a lush green paradise. It sounds impossible. Imagine Antarctica not as an icy wasteland, but as a land of swaying forests and flowing rivers. And yet, scientists are uncovering hard evidence that this unimaginable vision is true. A discovery that rewrites the history of the southernmost continent. For centuries, Antarctica was a blank space on maps, shrouded in mystery. Early cartographers and explorers filled that void with imagination. In 1513, Ottoman Admiral Piri Reis drew a world map that included a mysterious southern landmass. Later speculators claimed it was Antarctica, shown without ice. Another 16th century map by French cartographer Orance Fine depicted a terra australis, complete with rivers and mountains, as if a warm continent existed at the bottom of the world. Such maps and legends fueled the idea that a temperate, habitable Antarctica might be more than mere fantasy. In the 20th century, real evidence began to emerge from the ice. In 1912, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott's doomed South Pole expedition made a shocking discovery. Fossilized leaves in Antarctic rock. These were leaves of Glossopteris, an extinct tree found high on a glacier far inland. Scott's party perished in the cold, but they had clung to these stone leaf impressions as precious proof of life. When the fossils were later examined, they confirmed that Antarctica had once been blanketed by vegetation. In the following years, other explorers found seams of coal in the Transantarctic mountains and even petrified wood on barren peaks, further undeniable signs that luxuriant forests once thrived here long ago. Fast forward to today, and scientists are literally drilling into Antarctica's past. Recently, a research team bored deep into the seabed near the coast and pulled up a cylinder of mud from about 90 million years ago. Inside that core were startling traces of a lost world. Fossil pollen and spores from plants that only grow in warm, humid climates, plus tangles of fossil roots from ancient trees. They even found tiny fragments of insects and bits of charcoal, evidence that wildfires once crackled through green Antarctic forests. It was as if a window had opened onto a Cretaceous-era rainforest hidden beneath the ice. How could such a frozen land have ever been a jungle? The answer lies in the long tail of plate tectonics and shifting climates. Hundreds of millions of years ago, Antarctica was joined with other landmasses in the supercontinent Gondwana. It sat farther north and wasn't isolated at the pole, and Earth's atmosphere held far more carbon dioxide, creating a warmer global climate. As the continents slowly drifted apart, Antarctica journeyed southward. About 34 million years ago, it finally separated from South America, opening the Drake Passage, a deep sea channel around the continent. This allowed a frigid ocean current to circle continuously, cutting Antarctica off from warmer waters. Around the same time, the planet's overall climate cooled. Ice began to accumulate. Year by year, the glaciers expanded, and the once green land turned white. By roughly 14 million years ago, Antarctica had become the icy desert we know today, its jungles locked away under thick ice sheets. Today, scientists use advanced technology to peel back those layers of ice and time. Satellite imagery and ice-penetrating radar allow researchers to map the hidden world beneath the ice. These tools have revealed mountain ranges and valleys buried under the frozen blanket, including riverbeds etched long ago by flowing water. It's as though we have a blueprint of ancient Antarctica, almost a map of where its lakes and forests once lay. Researchers also run computer simulations to recreate those past climates, 
The models confirm that with high greenhouse gas levels and different ocean currents, a balmy green Antarctica was not only possible, it was expected. In those bygone eons, the South Pole could harbor mossy swamps and fern-filled woodlands instead of ice. All these discoveries have upended what we thought we knew about Antarctica. The old legends of a verdant southern continent are no longer just idle speculation. They're scientific reality. Using evidence gathered from rock, ice and fossil records, researchers have essentially drawn a secret map of Antarctica's hidden history. This map, not on any paper or parchment but pieced together through science, proves the unimaginable truth. The coldest place on Earth was once a thriving jungle. Antarctica's saga is a powerful reminder that our planet's climate can change drastically, and even the most permanent-seeming landscapes can hide incredible secrets. The frozen south has given up one of its greatest mysteries, but many more lie in wait. As exploration continues and technology pushes further, who knows what other revelations are locked in Antarctica's ancient ice, waiting to be discovered. But just when you think we've uncovered the strangest enigmas of the ancient world, something even older surfaces. Scientists have now found a cave sealed long before the last ice age. What they discovered inside defies everything we thought we knew about human history. For decades, the mesmerizing cave art of the Paleolithic era has captivated our imaginations. These vibrant depictions of animals, etched and painted onto the walls of caves across Europe, offer a tantalizing glimpse into the minds of our Ice Age ancestors. But alongside the majestic aurochs, horses and deer lie a series of enigmatic markings, dots, lines and symbols that have long baffled researchers. What did they mean? Were they merely decorative or did they hold a deeper, more profound significance? A recent groundbreaking study, spearheaded by an unlikely hero, a furniture conservator named Ben Bacon, has cracked the code revealing a sophisticated system of proto-writing that predates any other known writing system by at least 20,000 years. This discovery is rewriting our understanding of early human cognition and pushing back the timeline of symbolic communication. It's easy to fall into the trap of viewing our Ice Age ancestors as primitive hunter-gatherers solely focused on survival. However, the archaeological record paints a far richer and more nuanced picture. These were not merely cavemen eking out a precarious existence. Evidence shows that they built complex structures, such as the mammoth bone houses found in Eastern Europe, showcasing remarkable engineering skills. They were master artisans, as evidenced by the exquisite detail of their stone tool technology, a field meticulously documented by archaeologists like Francois Bourde in his influential work, A Tale of Two Caves. The delicately carved Venus figurines found across Eurasia, hint at a developed aesthetic sense and perhaps even a symbolic representation of fertility or the female form. Furthermore, their elaborate burial practices, meticulously studied by researchers like Margaret Conkey, suggest a complex belief system and a spiritual life that extended beyond the mundane. As Conkey notes in her work on Upper Paleolithic Symbolism, these rituals indicate a society capable of abstract thought and symbolic representation. The Ice Age people inhabited a world imbued with meaning, a world where rituals and beliefs played a significant role. As Pliny the Elder observed centuries later in his Natural History, Book 18, humans have long sought to understand and interpret the natural world. The moon fills the earth with fertilizing moisture and stimulates the generative power in all animals. This awareness of natural cycles likely played a crucial role in Ice Age life, influencing their rituals and survival strategies. The cave paintings themselves are a testament to their artistic prowess. Sites like Lascaux, Altamira, and Chauvet Pont d'Arc are veritable galleries of prehistoric art, showcasing a mastery of form, color, and perspective. But within these masterpieces lie the cryptic markings that have puzzled researchers for so long. Ben Bacon, an amateur archaeologist driven by an insatiable curiosity, believed these markings were more than just random doodles. He suspected they held a specific meaning, a key to unlocking the thoughts and knowledge of our Ice Age ancestors. Immersing himself in the available research, 
Bacon spent countless hours studying images of cave art, meticulously recording every instance of these markings. Bacon's meticulous work led him to a groundbreaking hypothesis. The markings were related to animal life cycles. He reached out to academics, and his theory resonated with Professor Paul Pettit and Professor Robert Kentridge from Durham University and Professor Tony Freeth from University College London. They, along with two independent researchers, collaborated with Bacon, pooling their expertise to test his hypothesis. Their findings, published in the Cambridge Archaeological Journal, are nothing short of revolutionary. The markings, they argue, represent a lunar calendar, a system for tracking the reproductive cycles of various animal species. By comparing the number of marks associated with each animal to the known birth cycles of their modern-day counterparts, the team deduced that the marks corresponded to lunar months. The Y symbol, they posit, signified giving birth. This system of proto-writing is remarkably sophisticated. It demonstrates that Ice Age hunter-gatherers were not merely passive observers of their environment. They were actively recording information, using a symbolic system to track crucial events in the natural world. As Professor Pettit explains, the results show that Ice Age hunter-gatherers were the first to use a systematic calendar and marks to record information about major ecological events within that calendar. This discovery builds upon the work of researchers like Genevieve von Petzinger, who has painstakingly documented the recurring symbols found in Paleolithic art across Europe. Her research has identified at least 32 distinct symbols, suggesting a shared system of symbolic communication that spanned vast distances and long periods. While the exact meaning of all these symbols remains to be deciphered, von Petzinger's work, combined with Bacon's findings, paints a picture of a far more complex and interconnected Ice Age world than previously imagined. The exploration of Ice Age symbolism doesn't stop with the markings themselves. Some researchers, including the author of the Old European Culture blog, propose that the very arrangement of animals within the cave art encodes knowledge. They argue that the groupings of animals and their relationships to one another tell stories about the seasons, celestial events and other natural phenomena. While this remains a more speculative area of research, it presents compelling evidence that this form of symbolic communication may have persisted for millennia, from the Paleolithic to the Neolithic and beyond. It suggests a deep and enduring connection between humans and the natural world, a connection expressed through art, ritual, and a sophisticated understanding of the cycles of life. As Tacitus wrote in his Germania, early societies were often governed more by their own beliefs than by laws. These beliefs, deeply intertwined with the natural world, are now slowly being revealed through the painstaking work of researchers like Ben Bacon. The discovery of the Ice Age lunar calendar is a watershed moment in our understanding of early human history. It demonstrates that the roots of writing, of scientific observation, and of complex symbolic thought stretch far deeper into the past than we ever imagined. Ben Bacon's work, a testament to the power of curiosity and collaboration, has opened a new chapter in the human story, revealing the remarkable cognitive abilities of our Ice Age ancestors. The Ice Age, once viewed as a period of primitive struggle, is now emerging as a time of intellectual awakening a time when the seeds of human civilization were sown. As we continue to explore the mysteries of the past, we are not only uncovering the secrets of our ancestors, but also gaining a deeper understanding of ourselves. If you like this video, then buckle up, because you're going to love our next adventure. Get ready to discover the mystery of the bizarre ear tablets found near the Great Sphinx of Giza. That's right. We're diving deep into the ancient Egyptian practice of creating these strange votive offerings, also known as ear steli, during the New Kingdom period. We'll explore their possible connection to the god Horemaket, the Sphinx himself, and even other deities like Tar. We're talking history, archaeology, and the hidden meaning behind these fascinating artifacts. Were they used for prayers? What secrets do the inscriptions hold? Join us next time as we uncover the secrets of ancient Egypt and these unique ear tablets. You won't want to miss it. The sands of Egypt hold countless secrets, whispers of a civilization that flourished thousands of years ago. We are captivated by the grandeur of the pyramids, the enigmatic gaze of the Sphinx, and the intricate hieroglyphs that adorn temple walls. But sometimes, the most intriguing mysteries are found in the smaller, seemingly unusual artifacts. 
Today, we delve into one such enigma, the curious case of ancient Egyptian ear tablets. Our story begins in the 1930s, near the majestic Great Sphinx of Giza. Dr. Salim Hassan, a prominent Egyptologist, was leading excavations in and around the New Kingdom Sphinx Temple built by Amenhotep II, as well as within the Sphinx's enclosure itself. Amidst the expected finds, something peculiar emerged. Stone steely, not inscribed with the usual hieroglyphs or divine figures, but with carvings of human ears. These were not isolated occurrences. Dozens of these ear tablets were unearthed, presenting a perplexing puzzle. 